two knights, one soul, Siegmeier and Siegward of Katarina. The Knights of Dark Souls stand as symbols of their homelands. For instance, from Oscar and Solaire, we sense the valiant doom of Astora. From Oswald and Lautrec, the grim sects of Karim, look to Petrus to glimpse the hypocrisy of Thoroland, or to the Lothric Knights for their motif of self-sacrifice. But if I ask you to imagine Katarina, you should think fondly of the place, for Katarina is a land of alcohol and rejoicing, and its knights are jovial and brave. Like its neighbours, Katarina is surely crippled by the undead curse, which dooms the afflicted to endless life and to a hollow fate. But for all of its horrors, undeath affords certain opportunities. Some become motivated to seek out ancient arts, or to indulge absurd obsessions. It's no longer unreasonable to think you could reach the lands of the gods, or trigger ancient prophecies. Your morals become challenged in the face of eternity, and it's likely the ancient gods themselves who left you to this fate. But to Siegmeier, his curse meant one simple thing, adventure. And one by one, they all learn the limits of the flesh, the limits of want, and while all of them hollow in the end, their stories remain. To be undead is to lose yourself, and an undead who loses everything becomes hollow. Rare is the sight of a human in Lordran, for Sieglind only has one life to lose. Despite this, she not only travels halfway across the world to get here, but also manages to traverse the length of Lordran itself, making her an awe-inspiring knight, really. Oh, have you seen my father? You wouldn't miss him, a suit of armor just like mine. My goodness, I knew he was here somewhere. Well then, now I must find him. Thanks again, truly. Now I shall just stay put and keep out of trouble. She's a small part of the life that Siegmeier left behind, but an undead's memories fade quickly, with the oldest going first. My daughter risked life and limb just to find me, to deliver her mother's last words. And the poor girl's not even undead. <sighs> Heavens, I never asked her to do that. He came here seeking adventure, and that's quite a pure motive, really, compared to others that grip those in Lordran. His ability to progress and explore should keep him from hollowing, just as long as obstacles can be overcome and adventure be had. However... I've run flat up against a wall, or a gate, I should say. The thing just won't budge, no matter how long I wait. And oh, have I waited. Um, by my knighthood, I'm ashamed to ask, but can you spare a few scraps of moss? This is quite a fix. We'll need another three... No, maybe five bodies. Hmm, quite a fix indeed. The name Siegmeier means victory, and that is what you take from him. The gates, the old fortress, was that your doing? But be warned, gallantry entails great risks. Next time, give me a chance to come up with a plan. Well, our fates do seem entwined, don't they? Perhaps this too is the will of Lord Gwyn. As you save Siegmeier, you may well be draining his belief in himself, leading him to take one final stand. Those monsters making life difficult for you? You need not be ashamed. We're all in the same boat, you know. I really have run up quite a debt to you. Perhaps the time has come. It's a suicide mission to repay his friend, but you take that victory from him as well. And now I go. Don't be slow! Ah! Ah! Come on! Over here, you fiends! Panic! Howl creatures! I am Zygmaia of Katarina, and you shall feel my wrath! If you allow Siegmaier to sacrifice himself here while you escape, then he will hollow, but with his honor intact. However, the only way for him to survive here as if you save his life again. But you, didn't you get away? Well, you've saved me once again. Oh, thank goodness. I'm exhausted. So this is the last time you'll see Siegmeier alive. My father, 
he went on his final adventure. Don't worry, that's just the way he is, undead or no. Sort of reassuring, really. If he goes hollow, I'll just have to kill him again. The name Sieglind means gentle battle. Here, she's simply jesting that she'll always be there to rein him in, even if the worst happens. And it's a joke in poor taste, for it comes true in the end. Yes, now I see. You are one of the bad ones. Then there's only one thing to do with you. Oh, how can this be, dear father? Heavens, me, my dear little Lynn. And so, your friend Sigmar meets his end in Ash Lake. He goes to join his wife in death, and there's nothing you can do to stop him. My father, all hollow now. He's been subdued. He will cause no more trouble. It's finally over. Oh, father. Dear father. <laughs> Of course, it's not over. Towards the end, when the world has almost burned to ash, ash itself will rise to inherit it. These are the unkindled, undead who attempted to link the fire, but failed and were cremated instead. They're commanded to rise as a last resort to bring the fleeing lords of Cinder back to their thrones. And it seems, after Sigurd's hollowing, one of Sieglin's line attempted to link the fire. The name Sigurd means guardian or defender. No! You should have waited! And he has Sieglin's strength of purpose. We unkindled must put our duties first. And Siegmeier's disarming good nature. But for the moment, we've a toast to make. To your valor, my sword, and our victory together. Long may the sun shine! <laughs> Before he was unkindled, Sigurd managed to befriend Lonely Yorm, a lord unloved by his people. He was a giant who sacrificed everything, but brought doom down upon them all the same. So to Sigurd, his dear friend, he entrusted the only blade capable of felling him in return for a promise. One day I will link the fire, and if the bell tolls for me, I may not have it in me to return, so kill me if I ever betray that promise. Perhaps Yorm impressed upon him the importance of this role, for Sigurd too must have attempted to link the fire. How else could he have become unkindled? So like Sieglind once did for her father, Sigurd does for Yorm. It seems I am in your debt once again. My thanks. I could have not kept my promise without you. Now, for a final toast. To your valor. And my old friend Yorm, long may the sun shine! <laughs> With his duty fulfilled, Sigurd succumbs to his wounds, and Siegmeier's bloodline ends in glory, in an adventure for the ages. We have new Patreon merch, but I'll talk about that in a second. First, can you believe that the original Siegmeier Prepare to Cry was released back in 2012? Did you watch it when it came out, all the way back then? It's thanks to you guys that I've been able to keep refining my craft, so thank you. Back then, I was able to start focusing on this full time because of Patreon, and now I'd like to announce a new Patreon tier that gets you something in return. If you join the Collector tier, and then you pledge for three months consecutively, you'll automatically have this poster shipped to your address. It's a design of a golden Valkyrie, and it's somewhat inspired by Elden Ring, and it's designed by Seabot, who created most of the incredible merch on this channel. So this is a very, very exclusive product, especially considering Patreon only let me set $30 as the minimum for this product, so only the most dedicated patrons will want this, and that's fine. I just wanted to let you know that it exists, and let you know that I appreciate you all, whether you're a patron or just a viewer. 
So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.